Hello everyone. Today we are going to start with class 5 studies. So now in this video we are going to start with the chapter 1 that is reproduction in plants. We are not going to finish the whole chapter in this video. We will take it in parts. So this is part 1. There are variety of plants ruling this planet. Every day we destroy many of the plants but still we find that there are plenty of plants around us. The reason that the plants keep on growing in number is reproduction. Now the plants keep on growing because they keep on reproducing. Now what is reproduction in plants? That it is the process by which the living existing plants produces new plants which are of their kind so that the species does not go extinct. If the existing plants or animals or humans will not reproduce, then that particular species will come to an end. It will extinct. This has happened with dinosaurs and there have been many plants which have extinct now. Now, how is the reproduction in plants done? Plants can reproduce in number of ways. Reproduction through seeds is the most common, but plants do reproduce from other parts of their body and this is called vegetative reproduction. Plants do reproduce from stem, buds, spores. So if a plant is reproducing from any other part of their body except the seed, then we call it vegetative reproduction. Vegetative reproduction. So now let's do reproduction from stem. You might have noticed that money plant, hibiscus, rose, they grow from stem. Have you ever noticed which part of the potato or ginger you eat? They are actually the stems. If you take a potato which has a bud on it and you grow it, then you will soon find that a new plant starts emerging out of it. But this will happen only if you provide it with proper water and sunlight. Next is reproduction from roots. There are many plants which can be reproduced through the roots only. A new plant can also grow from the roots of mother plant. And it is very common in plants like carrots, turnips, beetroot, sweet potatoes. Next is reproduction by leaves. There are many plants which actually can be reproduced through the leaves only. The plants like begonias and bryophyll, they have buds on the margin of their leaves which when fall down on moist soil have chances to grow into a new plant. Some plants have special structure called spores. There are many plants which reproduce from the spores only. Ferns, liverworts, mosses, even mushrooms are the examples of it. These spores, they are actually a tiny structure. They look like seed but they are not seed. Now coming to the most common way of reproduction in plants. That is seed. So most of the plants like apples, oranges, mango, cucumber, okra, eggplant, they all grow from the seeds. So now let's discuss the structure of a seed. First we will be discussing the structure of a seed and then we will be doing the germination of a seed. But first of all what is a seed? A seed is a tiny life giving structure which can give rise to a new plant. It contains three parts. Now every seed has three parts in it the first is the seed coat. What is seed coat and why is the seed coat there? Seed coat is the outer covering of a seed. Now what is the function of a seed coat? Seed coat provides protection to the seed. Many a time seed are mishandled. They are not handled properly. So in such conditions it is the seed coat which protects the seed from getting damaged. Moving to the next part, 
that is seed leaves or we call it cotyledons now what are cotyledons and what are the function of cotyledons first of all i will tell you that there are certain seeds which have one cotyledon and there are certain seeds which have two cotyledons the seeds which have one cotyledon are called monocot seeds and the seeds which have two cotyledons are called dicot seeds now let's take some examples of monocot seeds the corn you eat rice wheat they are all monocot seeds and the seeds of gram beans peas have two cotyledons they are called dicots now what is the function of cotyledons cotyledons provide nutrition to the growing seed cotyledons have the food stored in it they contain the stored food which is used by the growing seedling now coming to the third part that is the embryo the embryo is a baby plant which lies between the cotyledons now the embryo is the one from which the root and the shoot comes embryo contains two parts the radical and the plumule the radical is the part which we call the roots and the plumule it grows into a stem so here we have covered the structure of a seed i repeat every seed has three parts first is the seed coat second is the cotyledon which we call seed leaves and the third is the embryo the seed coat protects the seed from getting damaged the second part is the cotyledon which provides a nutrition to the embryo and the embryo is that part of a seed from which the roots and the shoot grows now coming to the next topic that is germination of a seed now what is germination germination is the process in which a seed is converted into a seedling seed gets converted into a seedling a seedling is a small plant it's a baby plant the germination of a seed depends on various factors the first and the most important is the water inside wet soil the seed absorbs water water softens the seed coat this helps the baby plant to break the seed open and come out the second is the warmth or the sunlight it makes the seed active it is important so that the chemical reaction in the seed can start now the third is the air it is needed by the seed to breathe seeds if completely covered with water do not germinate because they do not get air so three things are the basic requirement of a seed to germinate that is water warmth and air when a seed is sown in soil and it is provided water then the seed it softens and the seed coat breaks cotyledons provide nutrition to the embryo and from the embryo the radical starts coming first the radical comes and then the plumule radical becomes the root of the plant and plumule starts growing upward and then the cotyledons in most of the plants even the cotyledons come out with the stem and from the cotyledons the true leaves which actually can photosynthesize appears till the time the process of photosynthesis start the true leaves appear and starts photosynthesizing the cotyledons provide nutrition to the plant slowly slowly more leaves starts coming and the cotyledons shed after few weeks so here i'm finishing with part 1 and now in the next part we will be discussing about the dispersal of seed If you have not subscribed our channel yet then do it and if you have any query regarding reproduction in plants then you can write it in the comment box and ask us thank you